Hello, this is John with Theology Ed. All right, let's go ahead and continue the series on Leave the World Behind. Uh, this one is, I'm going to call it like Trump won. What's next? Why what's next? Well, the last time we saw that the Leave the World Behind see, uh, video or film, excuse me, which was produced by the Obamas, uh, <clears throat> Obama's production agency, uh, actually has a lot of predictive programming about the recent election and in fact showed that Trump would win. Uh, that he would return to the White House after he had been away. And so we have good reason to think that, well, now we can get a, get a feel for what comes afterwards. And we've already seen Trump this time around, uh, if you've been following the news at all, is making a lot of selections or appointees <clears throat> which are controversial. Uh, and, and a lot of people who are supporters of Trump and MAGA, they're all excited about this because, you know, He's finally draining the swamp. He's finally choosing people who aren't just your traditional insiders and uh, who, who may actually be disruptive in some important or valuable way, they think. And, uh, uh, well, we'll see. But the predictive programming suggests that, well, it, it's not going to turn out well. Um, if, you know, yeah. Yeah, it's not going to turn out well as to, is what the predictive programming is, is showing. And in fact, it makes sense that they would want this to happen before things really start to fall apart and collapse, because who would they want to blame? Uh, people like this. And then they can group in there all the conspiracy theorists uh, or the uh, religious people that they find uh, uh, offensive or un they're not very, uh, that they don't like very much. Okay, they can, they can group their opponents and treat them as the enemies that destroyed the whole thing. It was working fine until these people came in. Now, uh, <clears throat> so we're looking at Leave the World Behind, not part three, part four. And uh, the, the very fast review, just so people are up on it, we have them going on a trip. They go to this White House. They enter the White House at 1116, the Donnie Darko clock, uh, like the election in November 2016. 11 16 that is when they entered the white house that was that election okay and that's also when you enter the unstable tangent universe where now that trump is in the picture the whole world could come to an end and they were all worried about that um and uh that night they go back and the clock is again at 11 16 because when uh the unstable un uh, unstable tangent universe collapses back on itself you go back to the beginning so you get a repeat of that uh 2000 16 election where Trump won against a, a Democrat woman. Here, Trump again in this election against a Democrat woman wins. Uh, and we have the return, and afterwards the Jenga stack falls, the collapse. And we saw these dates 11 4, up, up before the election, 11 6, the post election period, and then 12 2, uh, which is when that, uh, oh, what is his name? One of the commenters pointed out a very good comment. Uh, the attorney who is prosecuting Trump, uh, hold on, just so I remember the name, it's Jack, can't forget, I can't believe I forgot his name, uh, <clears throat> it is, yeah, Jack Smith, I, I thought that was it, but I didn't want to say it and sound dumb, all right, but, uh, so we have, uh, Jack Smith is supposed to bring something by December 2nd, so maybe that's an actual date that's important that we're going to gain some new information or insights at that point that's related to uh, the tensions and problems that we're headed towards, perhaps. But uh, anyways, the house, the White House, is represented as a ship where the upper deck is comfortable, cozy, and, you know, you get to see the seas and all of that, and the lower deck is where the slaves are, and you have symbols of oppression all across the United States, uh, and all the evil that has been done to people, and Indians, and, and war, and all sorts of things uh, on that which we've covered already, I think, in part two of the series. You can look at that map very closely. Um, and so we have this uh, symbolism going on. And that not, while they're there, in comes George and Ruth, representing uh, the uh, Obama presidency and those who support him in sort of an uprising against the powers, right? So we have... Uh, G.H. or George Scott, the captain of the ship, which we've talked about, and the 96 uh, slaves in the lower deck of that ship, 96 slaves, who came up in a kind of re revolt. Okay, they, they, it, is, it is a revolt on the little George. But the idea is that when the Trumps are in the White House, we get an interruption in 
uh, their stay. Now, um, we had, so we have the tonic darko symbolism, and that's where you get this unstage, uh, primary universe and the unstable tangent universe. And we come out of that. But at the time, right before they came out of it, we saw the election right before 11-4, on 11-4. They're like, we need to get them out of here. We're not going to do that by scaring them. You got to give them the sense of uh, comfort, like there's things are okay. Uh, they need to think everything's going to be okay. Everything is going to be okay, isn't it, she says. And there's no answer, just eerie music suggesting no. Now, later on, we saw they got scared. And here is the white family leaving the White House uh, and going out elsewhere. That's the leave, Trump leaving the White House, the end of the first term, if you want to think of it that way. And when you go out, the whole world starts to fall apart while he's out. Uh, you know, that's when you hit COVID, all the bad stuff going on. And so they have to, what, go back. And they go back to the White House. And <clears throat> that's when we entered that, you know, we got to the section about the flood. And the story of the flood came in where uh, uh, Rose talks to uh, her mother in bed and says the story about this West Wing episode where she was where a man thought God was going to have to save him in some miraculous way. And he ignored all the opportunities to that God provided to save himself. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, he, he gets upset at God in the story and uh, says to God, uh, to, to, and so he goes up to heaven and he's really angry at God. And he tells him, I prayed to you every day. I thought you loved me. Why didn't you save me? And God says, I sent you a radio report, a rowboat, and a helicopter. What more do you want? Uh, what's this about, Rose? And I think I'm done waiting. The idea is she's learning this lesson from that man. All the signs are there. Things are going to get really, really bad. She's the only one who's actually going to go to the bunker and save herself, while most of the people are going to go around holding on to a false hope. Things are going to get better. Uh, just if we ride it out a little longer, it'll be okay, or they're not decisive enough to actually do anything, and they're going to perish. That's the idea. Okay, but um, so she's done waiting, and that's what's going on with the flood. So the idea is, after they get back to the house, the White House, you know, things are basically done. Uh, time is over. No more, no more waiting. Uh, you need to make a decide decision here. Uh, and <clears throat> while that conversation is going on, another conversation is going on between uh, Ruth and George. And that conversation says trust shouldn't easily be doled out to anyone, especially white people. Says. Uh, Ruth, of course, with the 96 on her shoulder, the revolt. Uh, even mom would agree with me on that. He says, I got it. She says, do you? Because we're sleeping in the basement of our own house for the second night in a row. Just what exactly was the point of letting them back into the house? What exactly was the point of letting Trump take the White House again? Do you get it? Do you really understand the danger that he poses? That's the idea. Okay. And he says it was the right thing to do. And she says, you know, so letting him back in was the right thing to do. Uh, and that right there, that's what's going to screw us over in the end. So we get from the film that the thing that's going to lead to the destruction and the, the thing that's going to screw us over in the end is the readmission of Trump and the Trumps to the White House. And it's at that point we get the, the, we get the uh, depiction of a lunar eclipse. Uh, uh, there's more than one in 2025, but the first one's the Pi Eclipse on March 14th, which I think shows up quite a bit in predictive programming. Uh, but it's possible that it's the later one in the year. Um, and, but I think it's most likely the Pi Eclipse. And, uh, and that's where we end up showing up with the finally in the last section or part of the film, which is where we're at now. Okay, so this is part five, the last one. Um, and we're going to get to the end, the end of lots of things. Uh, and, and finally... Uh, Rose, the only one who was prudent enough to go to the bunker, is the only one who's going to have the satisfaction of seeing the final, you know, the joy, whatever her joys were, right? Because what does she do? She goes to the end, she's going to see the, uh, uh, at the end, she gets to see that episode that she longed to see throughout the whole film, the thing that made her happy. Okay? And, uh, and so she's the one that gets to be happy, I think is implied, and the other people not so much because they're out there going to get killed. All right, so the last one. Here's what we where we're at. 
So, of course, Archie, uh, his teeth fell out. It's really terrible. They're trying to speculate what it is. He also is vomiting. Uh, vomits, uh, I think it was blood at the time. But anyways, he, he, uh, they don't know if it's because of a tick bite or if it's because of the noise. Uh, and, but either way, they need to get him treatment, they think. And so they're going to start looking into what treatments they can get him or where to, what, what they could do. They can't get him to the hospital. So George says, <clears throat> let's take him over to Danny who is the prepper. And, um, and so <clears throat> they prepare to go to Danny, the prepper. And that's an important character in the film <clears throat> because they're going to go to him because they need him to help them in a crisis. And he's not willing to give up his own resources for their benefit. Um, and we'll see that that leads to a standoff between Danny, who's a representative, I think, of the Texas government or of the states seeking independence or whatnot, uh, and the federal government, who's represented by the uh, two men in the families who represent probably Trump and Obama. We'll get there in just a second. <clears throat> and so Danny will know what to do. And so they prepare to go to Danny. Uh, interesting symbolism here. We have the black and white, uh, which, of course, this painting has changed throughout the film. We talked about that in part one and two, I think. Um, of the series but uh here that changes and here we have a black man and a white woman and the mingling is showing up here i'm not sure exactly what the significance of that is but i doubt that's uh, coincidental um <clears throat> and she promises to help and they're wondering where rose is at because rose remember she was done last night i'm done waiting she'd gone to the bunker she rode her bike over like donnie darko in the middle of the night left because you know that's who she's sort of representing. Uh, and that's why the, the Ruth even called her, like Donnie Darko, and looks out to the woods like Donnie Darko. Uh, so she rides off and goes to the bunker. But they, they don't know that. So they're looking around for Rose. Um, not anywhere that they've checked so far. All right, so <clears throat> let's see. What do we need? So all right they're gonna rush him off okay so when they're taking him out to the car ruth you know is talking to her dad saying you can't leave basically you can't leave me by my here by myself it'll be okay dad we talked about this you cannot leave me here by myself right the perhaps the idea here is that the people in power the left who should be like you know powerful people on the left, like the president, former president, and so on, who should be more actively supporting their, their followers are actually going off to be supportive of uh, the Trumps, letting him to be president, maybe uh, approving his appointees, who knows, <clears throat> this sort of thing. But they're, they're, they're giving more support uh, to this administration than they should give uh, in the view of their followers. Maybe that's the idea. I'm not exactly... Sure, but she says you can't leave me here by by himself. Uh, he said he's sick. Don't you don't you see that, Dad? Come, you you know, you will never come back. And I think that's uh, indicating what actually happened. I don't think we we never see them came, see him come back successfully. And um, the hints seem to be that things got very terrible out there. Okay, don't you see that something is happening? It is happening right now. Whatever it is, it's happening to Archie. It's happening to all of us. Okay, you can't leave. The world could be ending out there. That's why. That's why I want you here. Take out your phone. He says, "Come on, take it out." So they're gonna come to this agreement. I'll be back in an hour. And remember, uh, in an hour it can be brought down, right? Biblically, you know, it's in an hour it'll be destroyed. This sort of thing. Um, I think that's a hint at the last hour coming. Uh, look, I'll be back uh, for you before this goes off. One hour. That's what you get. You've promised. And we go, and we're going to see this spinning. I think the spinning is related to the Donnie Darko symbolism. Uh, at the beginning of the film, remember when they, there's the barometer scene as they're going to go to the beach, and we have a, the way it spins, the, the screen turns to the spirals to the left while the car is spiraling to the right. You get a spiral effect. That's entering uh, the tangent universe symbolically. Uh, in Donnie Darko, we had the, uh, the spiral on the jet engine at the beginning, and then when Donnie, at the end, uh, sees the hurricane or the storm spiraling overhead, we have a spiral and a spiral. 
Uh, in Donnie Darko, we have the first spiral with the barometer po uh, scene to the drive. And here we get a, a spiral back. It's very interesting. It's pretty extreme. They show it, all right? And, and they spiral into this room, into the shed, because they're looking for Rose. It's Amanda and Ruth. And here we get a continued explanation of, I think we get hinted with the rabbit, or not the rabbit, with the deer representing the film. The deer in the film are important. Remember earlier in the film, uh, uh, Clay and Amanda were looking out the window and they saw two deer. Uh, adult, <laughs> you know, a, a mature deer and a uh, fawn, I guess, uh, standing, looking at the White House from, uh, you know, the line of woods, basically, right there at the, at the, at the wood line. And they were looking at it and they, they thought that was, you know, you know, nice. And uh, then we get that same night, two people, uh, George and Ruth, show up at the door. And I think the deer represented George and Ruth, the hunted, becoming the hunter or coming back, uh, a threat to the White House. Now, that would mean that the probably, it's probably representing people like Ruth in the film rep, who represent those who are down in the lower deck, the oppressed, those who the government has historically treated badly and so on, uh, now rising up to resist, okay? Uh, like these deer, which do not behave normally. In this scene, we're going to see that Ruth is going to transition from the hunter, uh, hunted to the hunter. And when she does, she's going to get antlers. Uh, and it's, it's, you'll see, it's interesting. See these leaves up here? They're, they're there they're strategically, and she is positioned. She'll be positioned in front of them so they look like antlers on her head. It's very interesting. Okay, so we go. Here's this conversation. Where would Rose have gone? Why would she leave? She said she was done waiting. What did she mean? What if we just went back to the house and we waited for my dad to get back? Uh, Ruth says, and then what? <clears throat> He'll find Rose. I don't know. But he, see, we're getting already the position. She's starting to show. I don't know, but he will help us. I just want to know what the F is happening. See if she's getting very aggressive. I want to know that position. You see the leaves. I want to know what the F is the what what the F is the plan. Okay, now here's watch. Now here's the position. So she's gonna turn and she's the cameraman puts it directly over her head. Okay, this is in in the hunting, right? So we're getting this position and she's backpedaling, she's coming aggressively. Okay. Um, and you see the language as she said, I just want to know what the F is happening. I want to know what the F is the plan. I want to know that we can find my, and so on, my kid. And so she's doing it. Now, what's the response? <clears throat> and then we can go back, all but go back to our house. Okay. What if that's not possible? I want to get the F away from here and you and whatever is happening. She, uh, she's, it's happening to all of us. I know that it's happening to all of us. So there's getting to be a bit of a fight here. Stop yelling at me. So she resists. And when she finally fights back, then she walks away from the antlers. If you want to think of the leaves like antlers. Um, <clears throat> okay. And how would leaves get up there? So, but okay. Uh, you don't care. You don't care that I'm here. And we get this conversation um, that becomes more friendly again. And my mom is probably at the bottom of the ocean. I don't have anyone else in my life. I have nothing to, to, to go home to but them. Do you understand? And I need my mom more than ever. And I, uh, and, uh, da, da, da. and I will probably never see her again. She says, I care. I do. I don't know what I'm supposed to do about that, but I do care. Why are you like this? What do you get about being, out of being angry all the time? So angry all the time. Every day, all day, my job, my whole job, is to understand people well enough so that I don't, so that I know how to lie to them, so I can sell them things they don't really want. And when you study people like that, when you really see the way they treat each other, well, you're no dummy. You see what they do, and they do it without ever, without even thinking about it. I did it even to your dad, and I don't, don't even really know why. We screw each other over all the time without even, without realizing. We screw every living thing on this planet over and think it'll be fine because we use paper straws and order the free-range chicken. Okay. 
So they screw over every living thing on the planet, including, you know, I think symbolically representing the deer. Uh, the people are screwing over uh, the oppressed population, and we think it's going to be fine. And the implication is not going to be fine. And the sick thing is, I think deep down we know we're not fooling anyone. I think we know we're living a lie. And agreed upon mass delusion helps ignore and keep ignoring how awful we really are. I'm not down to most things that you say, do and say, said Ruth. This is the part of the Venn diagram where we overlap. I agree on everything you ju- with everything you just said. But as awful as people might be, nothing is going to change the fact that we are all we've got. Now, this is an interesting line. Uh, this is the part of the Venn diagram where we overlap. Uh, a Venn diagram, when it overlaps, I think of the two circles overlapping. That, that's very similar to the partial eclipse symbolism we saw in the 76 mug at the opening of the film where you have... Uh, the handles of the mugs, two mugs overlapping. Okay, I wonder if we have a hint here of the partial of a partial lunar eclipse, maybe even going all the way to, uh, I think it was 2028, in when I talked about that in part one, at least the July 6th, 7 6 uh, partial lunar eclipse. I'm not, I think that's that's the right year, um, <clears throat> but um, either way, it's a long ways off. Uh, we may be looking all the way to the Venn diagram overlapping metaphorically there. I agree with everything you just said, but let's see. Nothing's going to change the fact that we are all we've got. I don't want to be this way. I hate being terrible like this. Okay, so now we get the deer sound. Now the deer, it's not coincidental. We just had the deer symbolism, and now we're going to get the deer. I do anything to have them there. Wall thuds, animals galloping. Um, And outside, we're going to find that the deer are basically circling the shed they're in. Now, while that's happening, this film often has parallel scenes. They show one, two scenes at the same time and go back and forth between them. Uh, so you can see that this is simultaneous and you also get very similar uh, symbolism. So here, we are, are a message in the two, two stories. So here, we're going to go and get another one. This is where uh, George, G-H, uh, Clay and Archie are going to go try to get care for Archie uh, from Danny. I don't know who Archie may symbolize. Um, Interesting name. uh, And and whatever Archie is, caring for Archie is something that the people who represent the federal government seem to be interested in doing. And they need the assistance of uh, Danny, who always wears his cowboy's hat with the uh, lone star on it. Uh, which I think hints at the state of Texas, and he's a patriot and all this stuff. And he comes out, <clears throat> and they're going to try to help him. Uh, off the porch and buy your vehicle. So he's being, he's not cooperating right away. He's sending them away uh, as if they're not friends anymore. What can I do for you? We're just checking in on you, seeing if you're here, if, if you're okay, if you heard anything, heard about anything about what's going on. My family rents a GH, you know, George's, you know, home, you know, from, uh, we're from the city. Well, that's a lucky break for your family. I imagine what a crap show that si- the, the city must be right now. I got to be honest with you. I'm surprised you guys are even out. We came here because my son needs help. Uh, he's vomiting. He's lost his teeth. They just fell out. Can't explain it. Oh, his teeth, huh? Well, it's got to have something to do with that noise. You know something about the noise? Well, it's... Not uh, all that dissimilar to what happened in Cuba a while back. Microwave weapons, they call it, produces a kind of radiation that can be beamed out through sound. Some people lost their teeth there, too. Outside of that, the only thing I know for sure, there's not a lot of information getting out. So I assume it's a war. Now, what what was going on there? You can look up the Havana Syndrome, um, these uh, anomalous health incidents that were happening uh, down in Cuba um, during, I believe, yeah, during the Trump presidency, the first one beginning in 2017. Um, here, Havana Center was a cluster of idiopathic symptoms experienced mostly abroad by U.S. government officials and military personnel. The symptoms range in severity from pain and ringing in the ears to cognitive dysfunction uh, and were first reported in 2016 by U.S. and Canadian embassy staff in Havana, Cuba. Beginning in 2017, more people, including U.S. intelligence and military personnel and their families, reported having these symptoms in other places such as China, India, Europe, and Washington, D.C. Uh, the U.S. State Depart- Department of State excuse me, 
Department of Defense, and other federal entities have called the events anomalous health incidents. Over a thou over of over a thousand purported cases, the majority of U.S. In, uh, investigative bodies found only a few dozen cases to be suspicious. Uh, once the story became public, you know, and so on, you can look this up. But here, uh, events. The original 21 events in Cuba were characterized as starting uh, with strange grating noises coming from a specific direction. Some people experienced pressure, vibration, or a sensation comparable to driving a car with the window partly rolled down. These noises lasted from 20 seconds to 30 minutes and happened while diplomats were either at home or in hotel rooms. Other people nearby, including family members and guests in neighboring rooms, did not experience the same symptoms. Okay, and so you can look into this, but uh, this is what he's hinting at here. So it's perhaps some sort of uh, weapon testing or something. <clears throat> well, the beginning of one anyways, the war. They've been saying there was chatter. This has to be what they were chattering about. Chatter, what do you mean, chatter? You got to read the papers deep in the page one. The Russians recalled their staff from Washington. Did you even notice that? Something is afoot. Now, what that is exactly, I don't know. Maybe this is, um, uh, is as much as we're ever going to know. Maybe we just need to sit tight, be safe, pray, whatever works for you. Well, Danny, uh, it's like Clay said, his son isn't well. We're going to need some uh, more than just prayers. And knowing the, how primed you are for this, these kinds of situations, we're thinking you might have some medicine uh, that would be able to help him. What I got isn't your business. Danny, come on, it's me. We know each other. We're friends. That's the old way, George. You're not thinking clearly. See here? This is Danny with his lone star representing states, individual uh, independent states, functioning, uh, uh, resisting the government and saying we're not friends anymore. This could be an indication of some sort of separatism or uh, civil war lead up or uh, almost uh, conflict, some sort of danger of a civil war. Remember in IPEC 02, one star flies away when the United States is split. Danny's wearing that star. I think it possibly it could be Texas. And we see, in, for example, the Shattered Union trailer uh, with separatist sentiment, sentiment writing. Uh, California's governor uh, declares home rule and uh, secedes from the Union. And then Texas joins, right? Texas secedes. Uh, then we had the movie Civil War, the A24 movie uh, Civil War, which was out recently, also had... Uh, you know, the so-called Western forces of Texas and California coming against what? The White House. Okay. Uh, and so here we're seeing the dynamic again. Okay. The states, the states that are resisting cooperation with the federal government and the guys who represented the federal government throughout the film as the presidents uh, of different uh, administrations. Okay. Now, if you have some medicine that can help him, we can pray. Say a thousand, uh, we can pay, I said pray, we can pay, say a thousand dollars. Cash might not mean uh, much if the government falls. Um, well, the whole network's down. My credit cards aren't going to work. There's no Venmo or Apple Pay. Uh, I mean, cash might be the only thing that means something. My son's really sick. He needs your help. He's 16 years old. And now we go back. And while the tension is rising between the federal government, uh, Danny, uh, 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 George and Clay and Danny, the states, if you want to think of it that way, or the internal division of the state, here we're getting similar uh, intensification of a situation between the hunted becoming the hunters and those who are uh, in the inner circle, sort of. Okay, and so we're getting both of these. They're going back and forth. Danny, you're in a difficult position. I get it. I would do anything I had for my family. So that's what I'm doing. I'm locking the doors. I'm waiting. I'm watching. I'm getting out my gun. Other than that, I don't have any answers for you. Ruth, it's bike tracks. So she's going to go look at the uh, uh, bike tracks. And while she goes out looking at the bike tracks, thinking she might be on, on her way to finding Rose, the deer are coming after Ruth. Uh, now, it's an interesting thing. I, I don't know exactly why uh, and how to explain. And this is something that, you know, commenters can contribute, make, make suggestions. Why are the deer threatening Ruth here? Now, to prevent, it's very interesting, the threat of the deer against Ruth is very similar to Danny's threat, which is primarily aimed at uh, George, not Clay. And what you're going to find is Clay 
gets between Danny and George to stop the conflict. And similarly, Ruth and the deer are, you know, things are getting uh, dangerous. And she goes in to try to help stop the conflict. And she's going to be sort of like the, you know, little savior in a sense, but not really effective. Um, I'll show you in a sec. But there it is. I'm going to go back inside my house now. I'm going to say goodbye and good luck. You come out again, you're welcome to stop by. <clears throat> but I can't offer you much more than conversation. I suggest you try your, na your neighbors, the Thorns. They did a basement conversion on the down a little while back. No permits or nothing. A buddy of mine worked on it. He wouldn't even uh, show me the plans. Now you ask me, that's rich, uh, rich a-hole talk for Doomsday Bunker. Come on, Danny. You can't desert us like this. Haven't you been picking up on what's going on out there, George? We're all, we've all been deserted. Okay, and now we're back here. See, the threat is getting intense as this is heating up. Um, I would like all of you off my property now. Getting the gun ready. We're not going anywhere until you give us what we need. The threat is intensifying here as well. She's going to come in to try to calm it down. And at the same time, Clay is going to try to calm down them. They're pointing their guns at each other. Okay, see? Trying to save the day. They're pointing their weapons at each other. He's trying to get in there to stop it. Okay. We'll find another way to we'll find another way to the hospital. There's no other there's no other way. Besides, he's not gonna shoot. Uh, it sounds like he's gonna shoot. I'm telling you, he's bull, he's bluffing. The F I am. Both screaming. See, she's trying to save the day. He's trying to save the day. Hold on, hold on. Uh, okay. Keeps going. And then all of a sudden, calms down, okay? And the question, drive away, da, 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 all roads are blocked. We're in the middle of God comes where there's no, no one else around. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do right now. I can barely say anything uh, without my cell phone and my GPS. I'm a useless man, but my son is sick, and my daughter is missing, and I don't know what to do. You, but you are a very prepared man. F, yeah, I am. That's right. That's why we came to you. Because you're the only one who can save my son. Okay, now this, this whole thing ends up where they scatter finally. They, this scare was terrifying. They're weeping. Uh, this also was a very intense scare. Okay, and it, they both stop at the same time. Now the deer scatter, but there's the explanation why is not that they were persuasive. Here, the explanation is that they, he just accepted the money. Uh, and I'm not sure exactly why or what, what the, uh, you know, uh, best explanation of this is. However, whatever this intense situation was between the states and the government represented here, it seems to come uh, to an end at the same time as this. And I think the cause might be a uh, false flight attack of some sort. Okay. If you watch... Uh, you know, they're going to speculate what the cause of this is. And they talk about the, the flyers that fell. And they find that there's a lot of disinfo out there. And it turns out that it's probably not any of the states. It's not political states. It's not, it's not uh, um, you know, ISIS or an uh, Arabic state. And not, not Korea that's probably doing this. But it's probably just the federal government <clears throat> or intelligence agencies or someone doing it as false flags in order to sink the country. <clears throat> put them in uh, communication, uh, blackout, and then lead them to be divided against one another. And then, uh, well, anyways, what was the cause? When the animals left, they walk up a little bit to look, and they see what's going on. This is probably what caused the uh, animals to scatter when that hit. Right? They're looking at the, you know, what's clearly act of war in the city, okay? And so some massive explosion had recently happened, and you're seeing the plume here. Uh, when that hit, the animals probably ran and scattered. So it's related to the, the violence that's going on. That's what put an end to it. And in the meantime, we get this conversation about what's actually happening, okay? And G.H. and Claire are going to have this conversation. Before we go, I need to know that you're on a level with me. 
No matter how far this thing's go, I need to know that we're good because if what just happened here is happening everywhere, people fighting one another. We need to get uh, get to that bunker Danny told us about. We need to get there now. Okay, and he had a sneaking suspicion of what was going on, but he wanted more information. Um, but what was going on, he explains, is a three-stage maneuver to topple our government. Uh, most effective way to do it is to destabilize the country. If target nation was dysfunctional enough, they would do this work, do the work for you. Whoever started this wants us to finish it. They want isolation, disable the communications and transportation, make the target deaf, dumb, etc. They synchronized chaos, terrorized them with covert attacks and misinformation. Without a clear enemy, people will turn on each other. Then you have a coup d'etat, civil war, and collapse. You see what this is headed towards. That's what comes after Trump. The second Trump uh, term is what is supposed to somehow uh, lead to these tensions that are supposed to push people in the direction of a civil war collapse. Uh, okay, and that's when you see what's going on out here, and we find out that there's nuclear radiation involved and everything. So, uh, being detected, uh, and then the film ends with Rose in the bunker. She went to the thorns, see, like Donnie Darko. Her bike's there. She goes into this house. She walks through with the clocks 11, 16, when she needs to go to the bunker with the second. This is the return, right? Uh, the return from the unstable tangent universe to the primary universe in the November 2024 election, which is the second 2016 election. Uh, the repeat of that one where Trump wins again. And, well, she knows that now is the time to go to the bunker, and so she does. And she heads over there. She's done waiting. And while they're all out there, you know, probably about to die she has all the goods you know white house and major cities under attack by rogue armed forces elevated radiation levels detected near multiple population centers seek immediate shelter they're out there getting irradiated while she's in the bunker and um so she's down there and she sits down she finds that they have all these movies and she can see finally the final episode of friends and she uh the episode being the last one and so she gets to end the film happy. She's the only one that leaves with a smile on her face, and that's it. <laughs> so that is Leave the World Behind, and the plan then is for the second term of Trump to happen. Uh, there's going to be some t changes happening e pretty immediately, pretty radical, that looks like. Uh, Trump may be trying to push things through. Uh, you know, Again, he's not doing this independently. It's all part of the plan. And then <clears throat> sometime perhaps around the uh, March, two th March 14th eclipse or afterwards in 2025, that pie eclipse, uh, things heat up and become really bad. I think, uh, uh, and, and it may continue throughout the whole term. It may have a few years of it, uh, and we may get all the way to uh, near the end of his term, but it'd be quite a bit different by then, right? So, um, but certainly civil war or something in that direction or a threat of it, a major uh, threat of civil war and unrest uh, will become an issue uh, if the predictive programming is uh, communicating what it looks like it's communicating and they're successful doing what they want to do. All right, so that's what I have to say uh, based on leave the world behind. Like, subscribe, share, take care, and blessings.